What's up, everybody? Welcome to episode 71 of Smack Talk here at SmartOutMoment.com. I'm your host, as always, Tony Mango. With me this week, we have two regulars, Mike Payton and Mike Burhan, and one newcomer to the show, Paul Hibbard. Thank you for the reference. <laughs> hey uh, hey Daylight coming, we're going to go home? Yes. All right, that's it for the show, then. Uh, <laughs> so what we have this week... Um, Ask him hot tags, of course, is every single week. We're going to do the TNA lockdown review. And we were going to do the monthly mailbag, but I actually forgot to keep mentioning that to you guys, so we don't have any questions. So there you go. Instead, we're going to do a penalization by doing the Fandango dance with a strip tease. Go, Tony. Oh, my God. Fandango. You might might not be able to see, but I actually am doing it. (laughs) Can, Can he just... Can he just debut, please? I'm <laughs> no, sick of this shit. I'm sick of the Punjabi down. playboy trying to pronounce his name. I'm sick of him coming out on the stage and doing nothing. Just fucking debut already. Sorry. I have Sorry. never seen Carly come on the stage, okay? That's a different show <laughs> altogether. Uh, yeah, so we got the uh, Ask Kim's coming up right now. So who got it right last week? Well, who got it right last week? We've got a bunch of rights, but not a complete one apart from one person. So I've got to give my kudos to Thomas Sander, who's been kicking ass and taking names. And he even put a little, like, uh, asterisk for the executioner um, in there as well. So mm. he put, I've heard the ask him three times. I'm trying to figure out if Mike is trying to trick us. Oh, that was that ask him. That's right. Where we can got so fucking confused. <laughs> yeah, if it's straightforward, the answer is Kane. It was, tell us this was... one and that and that, but not that. And then go back and, and then, tell us that. And then and Tony then... did the spoilers mid show. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but basically the straightforward answer is Kane. And then the WWE gimmick that he portrayed before was Isaac Yankum DDS hence the relationship to Jerry Lawler. Um, and the last question is, he was also the fake Diesel, which was kind of a wrongy, but then also mentioned that Paul Berra debuted another star prior to Kane, who was the executioner, a.k.a. Terry Gordy, for a very short run. Imagine if sure they if would have meant- kept the, uh, how they did with Ted DiBiase, he has the priceless gimmick, and, um, you know, like, uh, they kind of do, like, the Sim Snooker and different uh, relationships like that between fathers and sons and everything. Imagine if they would have done that with um, Jesse. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Instead, he just becomes I Executioner want, Jr. <laughs> with I want to say, I, I, say I thought the greatest uh, uh, tribute to William on Monday Night Raw was Road Dog. Oh, Lord, have mercy. This one is for you, Percy. Because nobody brings up his persona as Percy Pringle. Yeah. Because it was an NWA gimmick, that's... that's yes, it's true, but, it, I mean, it was just as memorable as Paul Bearer. Uh, oh, but if it wasn't in the WWE, it didn't exist. <laughs> uh, yeah, of course, yes, that, that, yeah, that's very that's true. That's in Vince's mind. So what's the ask him for this week? I uh, just want to give an honorable mention to I. Curry, oh. um, who gave Kane, um, also talked about Luke Gallows, who was the imposter Kane, which is what I wanted out on that one. And Tony mentioned on that one. Uh, and also Piada Man as well, who got half and half right. Good on you guys. Right, so the ask him this week. Let's see if you uh, guys are going to get it. I'll state the rules for our newest member here, Paul. Who basically, I ask a, a question in two parts. The first question is for you guys, if you guys get it or if you don't. That will lead us into the second question, which will be the link to the first. So we'll, we'll start from that. Um, so the first question is... And this one's going to be for us. Yeah, for where for you guys, but I'm, I'm, it's going to be a very special one, so to mm. speak. Let's see if we can we can find out if you guys actually know. It. If you've what, read one of the WWE.com articles, you might get it. <laughs> yeah, me read the articles on their website. <laughs> Fuck that. This is a person who had um, success in ECW after flopping <laughs> in the success. WWE because he had a he had sort of a marginal success as a tag team. Now, name the tag team. Dudley Boys. Name the person he was associated with as part of that tag team. Devon. Was a bit of a whore in the backstage. No. <laughs> so it wasn't Devon. <laughs> Unless you know something that we don't, Tony. And I'm jumping ahead. name his tag team partner who had an association with a manager and another group. 
I will give you um, I'll give you guys a nice little guess to it. He was also a doctor, such like Isaac Yankum. Who was he? Yes. Yeah, such as Isaac Yankum. So he was a fake doctor. So who who was this person um, who was tagging up with this virtually uh, unrecognized star who then went to ECW with this said whore of the backstage um, mm-hmm. and became a gentleman who had no gimmicks? I have no idea. I'm going to add, add an extra. That's a, me... that's a little vague. You got to... You gotta add give an us extra some thing kind of to detail. It. He was part of a team called the Triple Threat. Okay. You you know Peyton? Any guesses? I guess Lance Storm. I have no idea. He's also a deceased Lance wrestler. Storm. You got a guess, then, Paul? Just say the the person he's associated with has also uh, a few DUIs. Uh, uh, Triple Threat, 1998. Uh, Rob Van Dam, Sabu, and Taz. Nope. No. Oh, okay. Uh, what is Shane it? Douglas, Lance Storm, and come on, Tony. His girlfriend was a whore. You actually were infatuated with oh, her. Oh, is it Mike Austin? Awesome? Still are. Oh, Chris Benoit. No, no. Bam, you're Bam, talking Bam, about Bam. Candido. Yes, Candido. Finally, huh. Chris Candido. Right. So, who was the person he was associated with in his tag team? The Body, Body Donners. Donners. Body Donners, and you're talking about associated with Sonny in the back. Uh, but also the, his tag team partner, who was supposed to be his cousin by the name of Zip. <laughs> no, I don't fucking know. Who was also in the Body Donners as Dr. Tom yeah. Richard. Oh. Huh. Okay, so, right. Now, if you've seen TNA, you would notice the... Sorry, that's my phone alarm. Um, if you've seen TNA, you would notice the second part of our question, who... Candido's X is associated with another tag team. And this is for our audience, not for our panel here at the moment. Is associated with another tag team who had a tribute on uh, Impact this week. Done by another tag team. I'm not going to name any names, otherwise it's going to spoil it. And they had a return at some stage in the WWE after splitting up um, because they were having a sort of a brawl on WWE television. And they returned with experiencing sunny days only for a small time and having 2,000 at the end of their name. Who are they? Hmm. All right. Uh, that, I actually know that one. So um, That one was easier than our question. What right, the yeah. <laughs> so let's see who knows about that in the comments and all that. Make sure you guys tell us what your choices are. And we'll see you back in part two coming up with the hot tags of the week. And then we'll roll on to the TNA Lockdown Review.